Body in the fetal position. Hi, my name is Sushant and you're watching Film Reader. Mental health is not a new topic for mainstream films. However, the mental patients are shown as an extreme version of themselves or for comic relief, whether it was Koi Mil Gya or Kyunki. But there is a more realistic picture in front of us, which is entirely different from what films have told us over a period of time. For mental health, the patient doesn't always have to be loud or violent. He can be a normal person who oscillates between sanity and insanity. A Death in the Ganj is a film about a man dealing with mental issues and how people bully him. Mental imbalance can creep up without one's awareness and the film has successfully portrayed it. Vikrant Messi's character in the film is Shutu. He suffers from a mental breakdown gradually. So how does writer-director Konkana shows it? Let's take a look at a death in the Ganj. In the first act of the film, a family comes to stay for a vacation in a small town of Meklaski Ganj. Leaving the usual chaos of life, they plan to stay at an old family bungalow till New Year. It seems like a normal family get-together, but director Konkana has put little hints about Shutu's character. Once they reach, Shutu is not welcomed like the others. It is difficult to assume his relationship with others, has it not been mentioned in the second scene of the film. Have you met my cousin Shutu? Uh, no, no, I Shaman. don't think. Hello. Hello. Well, he doesn't come around here much. When was the last time you came here? Shutu is Nandu's cousin, who treats him like this. Shutu, you didn't lock the car? The headlights are still on. Come, let's go in. Oh. Are they, go and lock it. What are you doing? This is Bihar. In the first few scenes, Shutu, who is dressed a little off, lurks around. He's an observer in these scenes and along with him we all are. We are seeing everyone with his perspective. We see him getting emotional when he wears his father's sweater. We see him looking at Vikrant and Mimi getting intimate. We see him just another man at a dinner table who is completely ignored. According to Robert Mackey's book, Story, a protagonist has a conscious desire. So what is Shutu's desire? What does he need? What is his goal? In Shutu's case, his desire is not clear until we come to know later in the film that his father has passed away recently and he's left his mother to come for the vacation. How he's been wearing a shoe sweater every day. Oh, come on. If he'd lost his father when he's eight or nine, I can understand. But he's a grown man. For me, the underlying desire of Shutu is his search to belong somewhere. He wants to forget about his father for a while. But that doesn't happen. The inciting incident happens in Shutu's life when he is asked to participate in a game to call ghosts. I'm anyway very sleepy. Hey, sleepy or scared? Unaware that it is a prank, he falls for it and gets really scared. Shit. Robert Mackey says that inciting incident is a single event that either caused by the protagonist or happens directly to him. Consequently, he is immediately aware that his life is out of balance for better or worse. The ghost game brings back the fear of losing his life. The director leaves it to the audience's imagination whether Shutu's father has died a natural death or not. So what scares Shutu? Failing in exams? Or death of his father? Shutu realizes that his life is out of balance. There is a fear of death that is haunting him. Now he must bring some change in his life to reach equilibrium. According to Sid Field's book, The Foundation of Screenwriting, a screenplay can be broadly divided into three acts. Setup, confrontation, and resolution. The second act can be further divided into multiple plot points. Shutu undergoes the same obstacles before facing the final confrontation. The idea behind confrontation is to reach the maximum possible obstacles so that the final payoff feels worthy. Shutu's confrontation can be divided into five plot points before hitting the climax. Shutu's attraction towards Mimi. Nandu harasses Shutu while giving him a driving lesson. A mistake? <laughs> Baba! Vikram beats and chokes Shutu in a kabaddi match. <laughs> Jealous Mimi comes really close to Shutu only to forget everything the next morning. And then, the disappearance of Tani. How are you? No. Wait, what happened? Hey, Vikram. Vikram, she's not in the house, man. What happened? As fragile as Shutu is, the harassment, the bullying and ignorant Mimi are all contributed to exponentially increase his pain. 
his self worth is constantly challenged and there isn't one person who he can bank upon a slight spark he sees in mimi is nothing but a fling for mimi but for shutu it is true love and the story may have moved further if tani hadn't gone missing tani chalo In Act Three, the resolution: Shatu is accused of leaving Tani alone. The entire family goes out to look for Tani, and they successfully find her out. But nobody cares for Shatu. When Shatu comes back by the help of the servant, he sees everyone having dinner. This proves to be the final nail in the coffin. Shatu doesn't belong there. He is not even asked. Throughout the film, Shatu has been communicating with female characters, but during the course of seven days, he loses their companionship one by one. So when he loses Tani's trust, he loses everything tell him to go ma it's okay baba like there is no escape we all have chutus around us some are vocal some are silent we can take a drastic step after being put through struggles of life it is our love and trust that can help them but these voices are very low it needs a compassionate heart to hear them shutu is not fortunate enough he believes that the sound of a gunshot will make us listen to his pain and agony <laughs>